All right, recording a bit more reaction content about Diablo 4 and a couple more updates to talk over. Found a great video to talk about it with, so let's start here. This is from the Comeback Kids YouTube uh, channel. Uh, link below for both the video that I pulled as well as to subscribe to their channel. Uh, but let's check it out together here. Um, I did responding to you guys' feedback. Didn't want it at multiple speeds, which is too bad. I guess you guys, I guess I'll bite the bullet. I'll watch it at one time speed. You guys can watch me and it back at like two times speed and we'll, we'll try to do it that way going forward and see how that works. So if you're looking for brand new information on Diablo 4, we just got an hour long Q&A session with the lead class designer, Adam Jackson, and the lead game producer, Melissa Corning. They talked about a lot of very key things when it comes to Diablo 4 systems, such as progression, player customization, cosmetics, respect costs, crafting, and so, so much more. Absolutely things I want to hear uh, the most up-to-date news on, so kind of excited to see. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot to dive into today, a very full episode. If you're interested in earning a free Diablo 4 game copy, don't forget to stick around until the end of the video to see how you can earn a free copy from the Comeback Kids. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Now, one of the main topics in the community right now is the fact that respect costs are a big concern when it comes to the end game of your character. The lead class is... It's a really interesting question here. Um, they're... I find their their position kind of weird, and I also am unsure of my own position here, right? So what should the the absolute perfect cost of a respect? Should it, one part of me wants to go, it should be free. The whole game is about experiencing these skill costs. It's about, or about experiencing these builds, about building the character the way you want, playing the game uh, with these unique abilities. And when you get bored, you switch to another character and play their abilities, or you switch your class up and try some different things. You want to be able to adapt to the new seasons cheaply. You want to be able to adapt to new content cheaply. One part of me thinks it should be absolutely free. Another part kind of buys into the idea that if there are no cost to doing this it doesn't have a lot of weight to it but it feels like a cheap way to generate weight to me like I, i'm not i'm not i'm not even going to posit a different idea for what another type of system that could do that is but i do hear the dilemma that they're working with here they're trying to make this the experience impactful to the player and are worried this will cheapen that designer was asked if they were going to make any changes or continue to look at feedback for it come launch or even beyond that adam jackson responds with we want players to commit to a fantasy and a character and have actual weight and meaning to their choices. Yeah. We also want them to feel free to customize their character and explore and try different builds and ways to play. We've landed on the fact that early on in the game, it's very cheap to where it's almost essentially free. Then when you get to the really late game, we do want you to kind of start to optimize and focus on a build. See, but there's so much wiggle room in that statement, right? Because on the one hand, you're like, oh, well, that makes sense. Early game, it's that. But then, and late game, it's not. Okay, maybe that fits that. But then, but then when is early game and when is late game? So I, I feel like there's already a ton of costs associated with the really late game swapping, right? And these costs are gear farming costs. You can't just swap your build instantly. You have to build a bunch of different things that are specific to that build. That's the whole aspect system. It's a number of the systems they revealed. It's the Paragon. It's doing the research to figure out the Paragon stuff, the overlaps of these uh, these pieces, and then actually collecting the gear in world, which takes a lot of time to do the farming to get the, the build to the point where it can do more farming, etc. So it feels like there's already some costs. So I, I guess the question for me coming out of this is when does the early game end? If they're talking the implementation of the beta, uh, previously where it was, you know, up to like level 20 or something. I can't remember the exact levels of it very early on, like early levels, you could respect, but by the time you leveled your character out, the respects were no longer free. I don't think that's enough time for the players. Cause I think the actual late game of the game is so much later than the late game of your character, like your character being level or rather than the later levels of your character, your character being max level is not the late game of Diablo. It's the beginning of the game of Diablo. So it seems weird that they have settled on it's free as you're leveling, but once you've leveled, it's no longer free. That's kind of a weird position to take. It's a weird spot to pick for me. That you can have an identity of, whether it be a werewolf druid or a blood casting magic necromancer. As for making respect costs free, I don't think we're going to be going down that direction anytime soon. But this is a live service game and we're continuing to listen to feedback from the community. So we're going to do what we feel is best for players. Pretty yeah. much stating that they aren't going to be making any changes as of right now. And they like the way Diablo 4 is headed. And if player feedback is kind of poor on launch, it is a live service game. They're very, very happy to make changes for the best when it comes to Diablo 4's health. The developers were also asked about Cosmic. Do and don't like that answer because uh, I do like that they're saying we're open to doing this later, uh, but I don't like that their their impetus for doing that to changing it all is going to be players really fucking hate it. So I guess from our perspective, if we don't like 
the respec, we're going to have to be vocally shitting on it and vocally complaining about that a lot. And I suspect that is going to be the case. I suspect they have put that notch too close to the beginning of the game and not further enough into the game. So um, even if they, they believe that mindset they put forth, with no reason to doubt that they do, but even if they go with that, I mean, then we should, uh, we should, it's still probably push for it to be later than it is. Medics. Mostly when it comes to Blizzard games, they range anywhere between fitting and comically goofy. Will Diablo 4's cosmetics stick to the dark tone of the game's world? Or can we expect all different question. kinds of cosmetics? Melissa replied that every single piece of equipment in the game right now is designed to fit within the version and the feel that is Diablo 4. The gothic horror style of the game. It's she awesome because the game looks so they good have right no now. No plans for pets right now. It was one of my favorite things in the beta. Uh, from like, if I just looked at the pure visuals of the game, was the how the gear looks as your character gets more and more geared, and how badass your character ends up looking. But we've definitely heard the feedback that people really like them in Diablo 3. So who knows? Now, personally, when it comes to cosmetics, I personally am kind of touchy on this subject, especially when it comes to a dark, gritty. Uh, you know, Diablo 4 style game. Yeah, there's some stuff gothic, that just doesn't fit into it. horror themed and adult and more mature. I wouldn't like yeah, anyone like running around with like a pajama outfit on or like a crazy backpack and like doing funny emotes. For me personally, take away from all the immersion. So I really, really do uh, appreciate that they aren't going to be doing anything crazy. As of right now, it's confirmed that they're not doing anything completely out of the ordinary and they're going to stick to the script and keep it a very serious, very toneful uh, Diablo 4 themed game when it comes to their cosmetics being Nice to hear that. I think they that's a really good quiet if fans uh, of previous Diablo classes like the Demon Hunter find analogous builds with the new system. Adam replied saying, whenever we make a new Diablo game, we want to balance the familiar with the new. We want people to have something that they can identify from previous games or play styles, but we also have to create new things because we have to make our game feel new and exciting. I think you can find those aspects from the Rogue, for example, which has a lot of similarities from the Demon Hunter in Diablo 3. We don't purposefully try to hit everything one to one from the previous classes because it would be hard to make new ideas if all you're doing is referencing old things. If we make something too one to one, then that means we can't bring that class in the future if we wanted to for Diablo 4. Yeah, I kind of like this take by and large. This is the Darkest Dungeon 2, Darkest Dungeon 1 comparison that I get asked nonstop in chat, which is I like the fact that Darkest Dungeon 2 is a different game. And here, I like that too. You want to lean into, well, Barbarian is a, a nasty melee brawler? Sure, but do it in new ways for sure. We don't want to exclude the possibilities of what we could bring in the future by referencing things too much in classes that Yeah, you don't want to overdefine the class. Four. Honestly, it was really well said by Adam here. He's pretty much stating that you could definitely find some similarities in the classes they have in there today. Definitely when it comes to the rogue, you know, tying in with that demon hunter playstyle a lot. They just don't want to make it too similar when it comes to a lot of the classes out there because they don't want to rule out the possibility of bringing in some very unique and exciting classes like the monk or the paladin, for example, that are very way left field and very different in terms of playstyle, because they would definitely want to introduce a character that is brand new, that is exciting, fresh out of the box that we haven't seen yet as a DLC character to highly encourage, you know, customers buying their product yep, and it 100%. getting really good sales and hype for the game. Now, when it comes to every class's visual uniqueness, the interviews brought up with the fact that people had negative feedback regarding the druid's appearance but then other people also like the appearance. The developers emphasize that their goal is definitely for every class to feel unique, not just through skills and animations, but definitely through a diverse visual appearance. I don't know what they're talking about. They're talking about the fact that Druid was like this big fat guy or like this big, like wide guy. I loved that. I thought, I thought it was super cool to see like a class that was like this rock kind of deal. It was kind of neat looking to me as well. Adam emphasized that it's important for every class to have different silhouettes so that you can tell what you're playing or what other players are doing. If everybody's running around looking the same, it'd be hard to differentiate classes out in the open world. This is something that's important that we consider when it comes to even gear and how all these things look different in classes. It's funny too. There's so many things going in here that are neat to me. I, I think the size and heft of a character model is actually cool to have associated with something in the game. It's associated in real life, right? Like I did do uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and big guys are a fucking problem in of themselves in independently to some degree of their athleticism because it's just a different type of fight. So seeing that 
different in the game, I think is super cool. And then I like this other point, which is this game is going to be flashy, tons of things happening, there's effects going off, there's mobs spawning, you know, with a teammate, you've got pets, you've got arrows flying, you've got a shrine active. It's nice to be able to very quickly and easily identify something visually because it stands out from the other things. I think this is a really good point. As well. All right, now the next question and response is very important, but it's also a little bit long, so try to stay with me. They were once again asked about the respec cost because later on down in the game, they noticed that in the Paragon system, refunding one single node would be 40,000 gold crap. or something I haven't close seen that to yet. that. They were asked if their vision is for people to create multiple characters within the same class like Diablo 2 or will it still be cheap enough that if you really want to change your build you can go all the way back for a totally different build. At what a great question. Adam states that I would say we're somewhere in the middle. Everything exists on a spectrum where you've got really two extremes. A lot of the time our answer is somewhere in the middle and then Depending on feedback, we may move up or down that slider of where it is. You can think of Diablo 2 where it's on an extreme left side where it's like you can't respect at all. Then the other end with Diablo 3, that style is pretty friendly and you can just experiment around and do what you want and it's really free form. But there are also downsides with that style. The attachment that you have with your character, build and your- I'm attached to my character somewhat anyways right like I, I don't i don't buy that line of logic quite as cleanly as it's being or quite as much as it's being pushed here right i'm attached to my time first and foremost i don't want to have to level a second character to max level because my first character can't be respect out of what it's doing or rather the time it would take me to farm the gold to respect my first character is is a higher time cost than it would be to build a second character i, I don't know where this I, I don't i don't this this answer is a lot less satisfying to me here because this is not a matter of where somewhere in the middle between these two designs, these are almost exclusionary designs, right? To some degree, which is if you, if you incentivize these costs to be so high, if you weight so much things on these costs, that you're forced to reroll, which is a, is just a straight time calculation. So it's like, it's, it's the question then I guess is when is that time calculation reasonable? Is this five hours of save worked? Is this 10 hours of save work? How much time do I get back with the respec? And that's a question. And I don't think that question I don't think the answer of we're in the middle between pushing a reroll and or or allowing people free rerolls entirely. I don't I don't think this does justice to that because I don't think that's really the question. The question is how much of a time cost is it going to be? And this doesn't answer that at all for me. Your fantasy isn't nearly as strong because you could switch everything and anything on a dime. We're trying to find a nice middle ground and that's what we're trying to make it really easy early on because that's the period of time where players can make mistakes and we don't want them to be afraid to do that. Later it's also the least impactful time though early on. Early on everything works and even more so as you before you've ramped up all the difficulties and really dug into the character synergies this time is not a time that we get to do much experimenting in at least from what I saw in the early access. Later on it will get a little bit more painful and expensive to do so. Do we want you to make a character from the ground up every time you want well, to change your build? Maybe they are going to this more. No, not really. That's a very <laughs> interesting thing to yeah, say as right. well. He also states that we want it to be a choice, so there should be some pain behind it or some commitment to the idea that if you want to switch, you can. But you're really going to have to invest into it. It's going to be a meaningful choice to do it as far as the exact cost and values. We are a live service game though, so I'm sure that those things can change over time. We're going to find out what feels right over time through player feedback. We want it to be a meaningful, impactful choice to switch later on, but we don't want you to give up and re-roll your character if you put a wrong point somewhere. That's definitely not our vision of what we want. Yeah, he still misses it though. Does it get does it get progressively more expensive to respec over like if I do like the same character and I have five different builds on that, is the fifth build more expensive than the fourth, third, or second build, even though it's the same number of points refunded? I don't I don't know the answer to that yet. And I certainly don't want that design to be in there. And I'm not sure this answers it. This is, seems like another one of, oh, we we can change anything. We're we're in the middle ground, but I'm not sure the middle ground is what we want here. And if really, if it's going to be, we have to bitch and moan to get it changed to where it should have been in the first place. Eh. Diablo four players to do. Now to quickly break this down, Adam is simply saying that there's two extremes to this whole scenario. There's an extreme where it's very difficult like Diablo two and an extreme where it's very free form and easy like Diablo three. 
They want Diablo 4 to be a nice middle ground where it's very easy and very fluid and freeform in the beginning for you to be able to test out all your builds but and where get is you know, the an beginning? idea on what you enjoy playing, what your play style is going to be like, what builds you enjoy. Then once you get to the end game, they want it to be a lot harder because they want you to stick to a certain build and they want you to cater to that certain play style that you enjoy playing the most. They want it to feel very impactful and they want you to dive into your character as a whole when it comes to that play style and that class fantasy that you enjoy playing. They don't want you to just free for- I'm not sure I buy that line the more I think about this. If I'm a necromancer and my whole thing is like I engage with death magic in some way, am I really defined by the fact my, my I have little red skeletons as opposed to real little brown skeletons as opposed to, you know, skeletons that explode versus a corpse that explodes? Like, I, I don't know that that is- I feel like the theme of the class is the death magician, the, the, the mage who who works with the forces of death. So when you say engage with that and feel the the weight of that class, we're not talking about changing classes. You know, this would be an argument that would be cleanly applied to, well, I want to change my class and not have to do any leveling for the new class. All right, I buy that a little bit more, but I'm not sure I buy it as a respec. Form change on a whim whenever you want. Now, the only issue I have with this personally is that what if you find a really super awesome, like powerful, unique item out there? They're very, very rare. But what if you find one that has nothing to do with your build? Yeah. And then what happens if you switch your whole build to cater to that unique item? Because you're like, oh my God, I got this new amazing item. I want to play with it. I want to see how good it feels. You know, I want to test it out. And then you go test it out and it ends up being horrible. Oh, That's yeah. the only yep. thing I'm kind of worried about, you know, when it comes to the playing of a hack and slash you know sort of arpg fun loot experience that diablo 4 is gonna bring you know but now moving on they were also asked how are they designing classes so that you don't have to choose the meta to be successful in gameplay and listen this is a very loaded question i, think it's an I don't expect question. anyone to answer this question very easily especially in diablo 4 let's let's hear the response adam responded by saying we have a philosophy that you should be able to complete all the content in the game and hopefully be relatively equal to all other classes and specs as far as their power level. Every class should be able to complete all content and feel equal in power to each other. Like the total package each class should bring to the table should be relatively equal and that's something that we want. All main builds that we propose to you or fantasies that we sell everything a part of that class should be relatively equal in power as far as the total package of what they bring to it's an interesting idea i don't think that actually can hold out at all right like not all of these builds are going to be viable people are going to be the whole point of a complex tree is you're trying to the fantasy you're enabling for the player is actually breaking the game that is the fantasy right the fantasy is to find the combination of skills and powers that puts you ahead of something else and I, I a don't buy that everything is going to be perfectly balanced across the board in all positions. B, I'm not even convinced that's an ideal. You run into these things of, I want to be rewarded for having thought about my talent points and thought about the way I built the character in a way that I wouldn't be if I had just chosen skills at random or chosen all the skills of a theme only. So we want more depth than that. And then I, I just think that from season to season, you're going to want the change as well. Is it okay that some seasons one class is better? You probably don't want it too much, but it's probably okay if it's a little bit okay, especially if the or happens from time to time for a small period of time or by a small amount or isn't immediately clear or has different levels in which one is stronger than the other. This type of thing I think is all re pretty reasonable and to be expected in a game like this. To the table. All these classes should be able to complete all content in the game, and they should be relatively equal as far as the whole package. Yeah, it's a good. Bring. It's a good idea. Now listen, it's a very hard question to answer, and Adam's been doing great this whole interview. I mean, all classes out there should be able to complete all the content, you know, that's available. These are very safe answers. It feels extent. like to me. Obviously, uh, you know, that would be ridiculous if I want to play a tornado druid and I literally cannot complete the paragon boss that i have to beat obviously that's a problem but he didn't really answer the statement of what's stopping people from continuing to just play the meta build and be very successful in that gameplay over other options if you want my honest opinion i think diablo 4 at launch just from a basic standpoint of how they designed the game as a whole i think there are going to be broken builds that are really really oh, yeah. strong and i think there are going to be broken builds that are really really weak at the start of the game and it's just something they're going to have to try to divvy out and even over time yep. i mean whether they like it or not it's just it's just how the game is designed in my opinion now when it comes to players not picking the meta build out there 
I think 90% of players are just going to simply look up on Icy Veins. Oh, what's the best Paragon board? The Capstone, the skills, all these aspects. And I'm just going to go hunt it down, make sure I have it. I, I think it's way too hard to balance. I think there's going to be meta constantly. It's just how these games work. And another question that goes hand in hand with this is the fact that they got a question saying, how closely tied is the relationship between the gear system and player builds? Will players need to acquire a specific set if they want to enjoy a particular playstyle, Or is gear more focused on enhancing builds that are achieved through skills and Paragon? Adam states that as- It's gonna be interesting to see how the dev answers this because uh, based on the gameplay, it is the worst of those two. The, that, that we've seen so far, right? That the, 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 actual text on the drops of the special items was absolutely class defining as far as how your build comes alive that's going to depend build to build pretty much every build that's in diablo 4 there's going to be certain legendary powers that you're going to chase that are going to make your build way more powerful over time there's also going to be ways to get it through paragon or your class mechanic and all these other systems the whole point of it all is that you have a lot of different pockets of ways to chase that fantasy down we give you the endpoints of what you're wanting to chase and how you get there is up to you. Pretty much he's just stating here that there's a wide variety of build enhancers when it comes to the Paragon board. This Maybe this just comes as part of the byproduct of uh, being one of these larger game companies. But man, that seemed like a lot of text not saying very much to the question. Skill tree, legendary aspects, you know, affixes on your gear, all these different things that can give you these big power spikes as you're leveling. So it's not just items are the major major game changer in the game there's a lot of different areas that'll make your character improve so it's not so reliant on gear and the last question was why have they veered away from gear sets when they've been such a key part of diablo in the past does it not fit with all these other customization options you set up at least for now in diablo 4 we don't want to tell players how to play so much we want them to figure it out on their own and we felt like our previous design of sets was too prescriptive in a way kind of agree with that i think uh anytime you get these types of, i'm a little worried the aspect system is going to do something very similar by the way but i felt like it was um the gear sets in the past have been too powerful for a thing rather it modifies it so much that you're obligated to use those sets and i'm hoping that this game does not steer in that direction obviously there will be that tornado druid example where some legendary powers you're going to want to have as they are very synergistic but for us to say hey get all these different pieces and then you'll get to play the fantasy it isn't the way that we want to do it we want you to piecemeal and get things over time so that's going to wrap up all the most important information in that interview once again ladies and gentlemen a lot of brand new information coming off right hot off the press uh with that developer interview you know explaining battle passes and seasons as well as cosmetics and character progression and you know respect a lot of very key details that we've been dying to hear about and a lot of the community has a lot of concerns on um if you guys want i would highly recommend going back and and you know watching it through a couple more times i i read this article maybe 10 <laughs> funny to hear this at this point because i'm watching him to recap that and you guys are watching me to recap his recap of that because none of us want to go back and watch that hour-long thing <laughs> times to really understand what they were talking about and there's a lot of information to actually go through. If you want the link to the actual article, I'll link it in the description below. If you want to go read it, maybe that'd be better for you. By the way, don't forget the Comeback Kids are doing a giveaway for a free Diablo 4 game copy. So if you're interested, please click the link in the description below to further see how you could win that. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. It's an absolute pleasure to be making content for you all. Until the very end, my name is Sky from the Comeback Kids. I'll see you all in the next one. You guys have not already subscribed to this channel and are interested in their content please take a minute to do that the comeback kids is the name of that channel but that was a pretty good um i like to see the uh, the thought process and the evolution of the thought process on these things as we get more and more information on it parts of this look really good but it does sound like we as the community are going to need to uh complain loudly to get some of the quality of life features i think it feels weird to me because it feels like part of the problem the devs seem to be having or expressing with this is they are concerned we won't have enough things to do with our time to keep us playing this game that we will also want or need to have to farm to respec our characters. And I just feel like the game looks like it's gonna have enough things that I could be doing that I'm not going to want to spend time farming to respec. I'm gonna wanna spend the time thinking about my respecs. I'm gonna wanna uh, spend the time farming the gear that's necessary for that, but I'm not gonna wanna have to spend the time farming the gold to even enable the reset 
to even try out the new stuff. So it's kind of weird to me that they think that that is going to be something that they want in the game because I don't see it adding very much to me. And I do buy the weight weight behind a class, but I buy the weight not so much on any individual spec, but on things like class cosmetics and that kind of thing. So we'll have to see. Hopefully we don't have to push back too much or hopefully they'll back that stance off a little bit. But my initial thoughts are this is probably not right where we want to be for that. We probably want it a little bit more open or at least a little bit later in the game compared to where the actual gameplay is starting as opposed to just the leveling gameplay. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this, please let me know in the comments below. We tried it with uh, one time speed from this video. My sanity is a little weakened, but perhaps when you guys watch all this back on two times speed and you get me at two times speed and that guy at two times speed, maybe that will work out a little bit better. Please let me know and I'll talk to you guys soon.